Hello, hello. Good morning. Come on in. Thank you, thank you. Hi, I'm Chris Burrows, and this week we're highlighting Corinne Walker. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that you're actually uh, you're 90 years old now, huh? And almost four months. Oh, congrats, congrats. Yeah. Thank you. So, so how long, how long did you get to Flint, and what have you? I came to Flint with a husband. Uh, when I first came in the 50s, there was nowhere for black folks really to live. Uh, and I went back home to Ohio because they were renting everything, including garages. And I went to live in a garage. This was in the 50s. They really did not have apartments. And the few they had were not for us. Okay. And so I just went back to Cincinnati. And I didn't come back here until 64. Okay. And I, then it was because everybody said, you're not going to have a husband if you don't ever go back up there. I would come to visit, but there wasn't anywhere to live. Okay. What, what, what did your husband do? DM. Okay. And I was at home working as a okay. nurse. Okay. So what, what eventually brought you to Fairhaven all those years later? I uh, remember uh, I had met at another church. She was wanting to transition, and I had suggested that she visit different churches until she found the one she liked. And Fairhaven was what she chose, but then after she was there a little bit, it, uh, she thought that she was, she felt intimidated, uh, not knowing enough. And I told her, nobody knew any more than she did, really. But she, so I said, I'll come over and visit with you until you feel more comfortable, and I did. Okay, okay. And I see you around all the time, so what do you, what do, you do at the church? Well, much to do, really. But whatever is going on, I offer to help. And, and you're a deaconess, right? Yes. Okay. When they have the different food give giveaways, I help with that. Okay. Um, and I visit the ones in the nursing home. Okay. Um, in fact, my daughter. Um, Keep saying, why do you keep going? I said, well, I'm not moving in. I'm just stopping by. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I encourage others mm -hmm. because if you feel, I, I feel that I would feel thrown away that my friends that I knew didn't stop by. And that's all I'm saying, not move in, stop by and say hello. And that's what I do. Yeah. So were you a greeter also or? But then you do something with birthday cards at one point. Just... Oh, I, whenever they let me know about someone ill or whatever, um, I send the cards because I'm not doing anything that I can't do that. And I don't mind. Yeah. I don't mind that because you need, you, you, you're you not well or maybe you've lost a loved one. You need somebody to make you feel that other than you, somebody cares. They want to help you. And a card, a little message sometimes, really helps yeah, write your day. Definitely does. And look at me. And then you have a family. How oh, many kids are you? It's all a family. <laughs> family. This is me and my kids. I guess I have to try to hold it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. That's my mom. I was baptized at 11. There was a song they sang that really to this, I don't hear it anymore, it's a very old song. But uh, it was what got me up. We used to call it the Mourner's Bench. Um, she, her name was Mrs. Rosa Barnett. And she, she could sing it. She sang this song, Does Jesus Care? Good. So tell me your testimony. How, how did you finally you know, we Jesus, do we think, and um, how's, how, what does he mean to you? Oh, I have told him that he has given me the words that I need for, for me to really, because good is it's not good enough for me to, but I really try to share him how he has been to me. He's, I remember a particular time when I really, really felt that 
that he was helping me. But all before it was, I, I, I didn't have a, to me, the great need. I knew that if I breathed, he, it was for him. But this time was when I made, up my, made my decision to leave my husband and take my children and leave. I remember crawling around forward to the bed, asking him to please help me. And I kept saying, if you'll just help me. Uh, and I was crying, and my kids was frightened because I was a crier, and they was crying. And they don't know what's going on, but I was really just asking him to help me. I need you to help me, and he did. Uh, and that song came back to me, because Jesus came. And I know, I don't care how, blessing come, I know where it's from. And I thank him each time because you might blink drink rest, but I know he sent it. And I thank him that I know that. Because a lot of times goodness come to you, you just take breath, but I don't. And I'm not any better than anybody else, but I know it is he that has sent something to me. Because he said so. And he said, I know your thoughts are far off. I believe that. I had a patient, but in fact, the last patient I took care of, Josh, he was a young man that had an auto accident, which he had a, hit his head. He had what we call a closed head injury. He was alert, but he could not speak. And he, But his mother told me that he had been a Christian for a while. And so I talked to him and I said, Josh, you can pray in your mind. I said, the Lord said, I know your thoughts are far. I said, and Satan cannot reach your mind. And that, oh, do I love that? Because when I am praising him, I'm live. But when I'm petitioning him, I close my mouth and let my thoughts, because he can read my thoughts and Satan cannot. So everybody, this is Corinne Walker, who <laughs> sometimes you join our church and thinks yes, that you've you been coming and enjoy stay busy. <laughs> I'm a busy person now. And if I'm not in church, I'm busy. <laughs> and I appreciate the church and the honor that they're giving me today. And I thank Chris for being such a gentleman to do it. Okay. Bless you.